Welcome everybody to the big podcast with Shaq. We are back again for another week. What are you talking about already, Spice? I hadn't even got through the intro. What's what you rowdy today? What's happening, man? No, uh, we, we were just talking about the Beijing. Yeah? We sometimes the, the be heavy handed, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I've got a good introduction to do here today, y'all, because Spice, of course, is with me. But of course, we've got Shaq here. The big fella is back, but the big fella has a guest in studio with him. This is a privilege, y'all. This is a privilege. We've got a legend in the building today. Mr. Tracy McGrady, ninth overall pick of the 1997 draft, seven-time All-Star, seven-time All-NBA, two-time scoring champion, Hall of Famer inducted in 2017, He's here on the big podcast today, and I'm I'm a little verklempt. Mm, Tracy McGrady, how are facts. you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Now, now that we've introduced you and gave you love, let's talk about the Beijing. Because <laughs> <laughs> hold on, oh, so do you, do you got any you got any tattoos? Yeah, I'm taking them off though. Why? Why? Oh. That was well, a kid, man. Because Michelle, you know Michelle's into tattoos. I was, Michelle's nah, into tattoos. I'm, I'm, I'm very taking, much into I'm tattoos. taking mine off. You know, I, I've, I've been going to get my treatment for the last six. Oh, man, you're probably. changing on me, what? man. You're getting soft on. Come on, T-Mac. Nah, man. You know, <laughs> you know I, I'm, I'm in a different mind frame right now. You know what I'm saying? I got oh, my tats when I was a teenager, man. and, you know, I was trying to find my way. So, there, yeah, I'm taking them off. Okay, there's, there is a thing about a, a tatted man that I really, really like. And I think See? that you can be like, <laughs> fix this in your head, because I don't know another phrase to say, but like an educated thug. That's the vibe that a tatted up fella that's doing his own thing gives you. Yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. Hey, T Mac, you in there. I, I, I don't fella, know if I want there. my kids to have a dad as an educated thug. Oh, um, T Mac, you know, yeah, hold on. First of all, let me, let me say something. <laughs> I've been knowing this kid since he's 17 years old. Now he's coming here with right. the sophisticated khakis. He's you know, sitting out with his, with his legs crossed. <laughs> <laughs> T-Mac has been cloned. Things have changed. T-Mac has been cloned. You know what I'm saying? Things well, have T-Mac. changed in my oh, life. You, you know, know? Guess, guess what? Well, I'm what, has changed? what has changed, Tracy? I'm, I'm Tell us. To, it's, educate it's, us uh, here on the big podcast. It's, it's, it's growth. growth. You know, I'm, I'm growing yeah. out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to be... Uh, what? <laughs> I'm 50. I'm keeping all my tattoos. I'm keeping all my gold chains. I'm keeping all the rims on my whips. I ain't changing hey, nothing. I see. I took the rims <laughs> off the off the whip. You know. I'm Whoa, down you know to, what I'm doing? I'm down to. I'm down to a uh, 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 everyday you factory? car. You, you got know, the factory. You only got one car. I got one. Car. Oh, hey, see. I'm, you know what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I got one car and I got I my, this, my my I don't you know, know this, my F one fifty that I, I go hey, Shaq, fishing in. Do you still? Yeah. We do like you an still F physically now. go to the bank? I sure do. And when I walk in, they better stand up and greet me as, as Mr. <laughs> O'Neill. Yeah, right, I go to the bank. And when I walk in, everybody better stand up. Hello, Mr. O'Neill. Yeah, I need some cash. Hell yeah. <laughs> Tracy, I, I we, we like growth. We definitely like growth no, on here. We like do growth. talk about a lot of that uh, from, from week to week. But I, I want to like take a minute though, because I mean, everyone knows your name, of course, but we do have something we like to do when we have guests, especially okay. our, our most um, uh -oh. esteemed guests on uh -oh. the big podcast. And I'm we start scared. with one question, mm -mm. <laughs> one question. And that question is, when did you know? When did you know that like, you just didn't like basketball or you just weren't casually good at basketball? Like, when did you know you could make a living from this? You could like become one of the greatest players to ever play the game. When did that hit you? Well, I knew in... Let me cut you off. This is not going to be a real answer because uh, while his uh, legs are crossed, he's twinkling his toes. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> <laughs> continue. This is not the T-Mac I know. T-Mac, I used to know I had a cousin. Oh, we're going to get to the T-Mac, you know. They be ready to knock people out. So, <laughs> honest answer. I knew in high school, my, my senior year of high school, right, I, mm -hmm. I knew I could make to the NBA. I knew I could make it to the NBA. I had the talent. Mm -hmm. I was the number one player in the country. Kobe Bryant, previously before me, made that jump. Kevin Garnett, before him, made that jump. I was playing against NBA players. I was holding my own. And, you know, I, I had the talent. Obviously, Toronto Raptors believed in that talent and drafted me number nine. So that's when I knew I can be in the NBA. To be a star in the league, it's probably my mm -hmm. first year when I played with the Magic. Keys were okay. thrown to me. I was expected to play with Grant Hill. He obviously had his ankle injury, and I had to carry the franchise. It's like, here you go, young fella. Let's see what you got. 
And I actually surprised myself that season because I went mm-hmm. from a, a player averaging 15 points coming off the bench being like the third or fourth option to now I'm the number one option. I got the keys. And I ended up my first year of being in that role averaging like 26, 27 points. And I just knew, you know, that work mm-hmm. that I put in, it was time for me to take on to a, a, another level of uh, my career. What was that transition like though? Like, I know you wanted success, like as soon as you got there, but I mean, you had to go through the ropes, right? Yeah, it was challenging. You know what I mean? I had a, uh, I had a coach, Darrell Walker, that was, was, was pretty much old school. And Daryl Walker, you talking about broke knees? You, you we know. used to call him broke knees. Uh, <laughs> he from Chicago. Pistons. You know Daryl Walker. So he yeah, was my, Darryl Walker used to play for the Pistons. We used yes, to call him broke knees. Yes, yes. He was my first, he was my coach my rookie year. And um, there was no structure with me. You know what I mean? It was mm. just throw me out there to the wolves. You know, I'll yeah. it was some games I'll play five, ten minutes, he'll pull me out, won't see the court for another you know, five, six games. He was playing mind games with me. And at 18 years old, that could have been devastating yeah. for my career. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think Isaiah Thomas, who was the president at the time, took wind of that. And All-Star Weekend, we got him up out of there. Butch Carter took over. And, you know, that's when there was some structure put in place for me to get on the bas- basketball court consistently. But it was rough, man. That first half of my rookie year was yeah. really challenging. Did you hear the key word right there? We got him up out of there? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. that. Okay, I'll keep that. I mean, yeah. if you're gonna draft me ninth overall, I mean, I gotta have some say. So, I mean, come on now. I hear you. you. Putting a lot of stock into. I like me. that. You know what, Tracy? I like when you said that though, because today I feel like that we have a lot of superstars who try to like hide, throw the rock and hide their hand. And so knowing that they have a lot to do with how things oh, are put sure. in place, what players, who's the coach, but they just like, no, no, I just yeah. play here. I like that you're owning it. Like, no, no, I was, they're going to hear me and they were going to do some things that I needed them to do. I love hearing that from you. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you look at how my career panned out, I mean, I was right. You know what I mean? Cause that could have been devastating. My career could have went left. My confidence could have been shattered, and I couldn't mm-hmm. have, you know, got out of that and and been the player who I, you know, I, I was dreaming to be. A lot of people right. don't know this, but I had a panel. So on my panel it was like the guys who I'm not gonna mess with: T Mac, Vince, and White Chocolate. Why? Because I used to love how they played, uh-huh. and I used, and so like we had this. We had this competition thing on, 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 on our thing. So, like, when I played a team and coaches say double, Kobe would be like, no, 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 play him, Shaq. Play him, Shaq. So, like, so, so like when T-Mac and all, you know, when T-Mac came down, we'd be like, we not, I'm not sure I don't know pick and roll. But y'all, y'all two go at it. So, you know, instead of trying to score the game, I let him and Kobe go. And, nah, then, was- and then, you know, like, White Chocolate, Derek Fish would be like, show on the screen. I'm like, nope, I'm not sure. And then Vince. <laughs> If Vince ever got by himself, I wouldn't. I wouldn't challenge him. But one time he challenged me in Miami. I didn't see him. And he tried to head. dunk on me on the back. It hurt me to to this day. I had to put him on his ass. No, you know I what did. was great oh. is anytime uh, Lakers would come to town, Shaq would call me and be like, he'll 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 try to really add fuel to that fire with me and Kobe and say some things that Kobe said. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe he said he coming at your ass <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. He used to call me all the time like, yeah. I'm ready. Oh, Kobe so Shaq was actually tomorrow. Petty White. Okay, yes. so you were Petty. Absolutely. Pet team. Absolutely. Okay. Never let me down. I was waiting on his phone call because yeah, I knew I was going to get it. I love it so much. So, you know, we know you had so much success, but you also, when you come into the league, you have to have that welcome to the league rook moment. Yeah. So when was that for you? Who gave you the business? And afterwards, what did you think? What was going through your head? And, and how did you even process it all? So going back to my rookie year, um, like I told you, my, my minutes in that first half of that season was so inconsistent. Like, I didn't know when I was going to play. I, I didn't know anything. So mm-hmm. it was a one game. We was playing Seattle Supersonics. And I had – my coach called me in. I didn't think I was going to play. He called me in. To, to, to go and uh, sub one of the guys out, and my assignment was to guard Gary Payton. Now, like I told oh, you, boy. I didn't think I was playing mm. that game. So I didn't have my shorts tied up. 
So I took off my warm up and my shorts wasn't tied. They had a knot in them. I couldn't get it out, so I'm trying to guard GP. Did you have on drawers since you didn't think he was <laughs> oh, playing? I had on drawers. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. So I'm trying to guard GP, one on my shorts holding him up, and the other trying to deflect balls and, you know what I'm saying, guard this guy who's deflect a freaking. Deflect what? The basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch, Tracy. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my uh, welcome to the NBA moment when I wasn't ready, and uh, GP schooled me a few times when I was out there. Mm -hmm. See, that sounds mediocre. I, that sounds kind of bland to me because I think everybody has one where somebody scores forty-eight on you. Somebody nah, gets you. I didn't good. get that. Now I'm gonna keep. You going never had with. that. Nah, no, I ain't get that. that. No. I ain't get that. No, you haven't now, had that. Now, uh, no, Smitty. Maybe, no, of course not. Smitty was schooling me and, and, and teaching me why he was giving me the business because I was like, he used to grab my wrist all the time to get by me. I didn't know what the hell he was doing. I was like, yo, bro, I was like, what are you doing to get by me? Because obviously I'm quicker than you. you are, you're not that quick. How are you doing that? Yeah. So it was a time at a free throw line. <laughs> you're, talking about, was, you're talking about Steve, Steve Smith, Smith, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah. He actually taught me how to grab people's wrists and get by. Like he taught me a trick and I used that my whole career. He sure did. He was the master at that. Tracy, question, but Maybe. before I, I, I give you a question, I'm, I'm going to give you a statement. I judged today's game off of one statement. Could they have played with us? Is that how you mm. judge guys? Like, you know, like, because, like, you know, with the internet today, a guy do a move and all of a sudden he's a great player, but we can look and see who's really great. So, again, if you couldn't have played with us, I don't think you're a great player. And that's just how I am. I don't know, because I, 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 look, at, I look at Steph. Right? He's a prime example of this. Could he have played with us? I think he could have. You don't think I would have touched his ass up? I, no, here's, <laughs> here's what I'm saying. I think he could have played with us. I don't know about the longevity. And we had hand checking rules. Right. And I don't all know that. about I don't know about the longevity. And we I, used to trap pick and rolls. He and got it on a string and he could shoot from And we used to flagrant foul. That's true, but that's where the longevity comes in. He's gonna touch the floor more back then than he would now, and those I think injuries will pile up. You don't, you don't think he was tougher than Jeff Hornacek? Oh boy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, See, Sp what Spice likes to do, it's a different... Spice just likes to throw names out there, Tracy. Yeah, Jeff but no, no, I'm saying, it, here's the Jeff thing. Jeff Hornacek wasn't no slouch, you know. Nah, he wasn't no slouch. Jeff Hornacek a ball. He was yeah. tough. But he, here's the thing. I think when you say they can't play in our era, that's that's a tough statement to make. No, I man. think it is, though. Giannis could have played with us? Yes, man. He would have been Giannis? Here's what I'm going. Well, here's where I'm going with that. Would he have been Giannis? They can play. I just don't know how great they will no, be. No, all that stuff they doing now. No, no, I, I don't think Thank they you. will be that. No, no, I don't think they will be to reach the level that they're reaching right now. No, you know, people call me ahead, but that's how I judge people. I mean, because that's how I, you know, judge myself. Like when I was man, growing man, up. Come on, bro. You play in any era. But hold on, Shaq. If if you and Giannis were playing at the same time, Giannis would make you guard the three. So no. are you saying you would make him conform to your game? Giannis uh, can yes. play in our game. Yes, Giannis can play all in day. He can all, play okay. all day. Like he's okay. I think he would have struggled because of how close closed up the paint was back then. I mean, you got to think. We had scores 70-67. Like that, that was the final score <laughs> of a game, right? So it was tough offensively because the defense was so great and the paint was closed up. Now, if you can't shoot, it's going to be hard. And Giannis' game is predicated on coming downhill, right? He's developed mm -hmm. a little jump shot now, but I, I think it would have been tough for him to be who he is today back then. And that was always the strategy to try to pull me out the paint. But you, 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 right. you, you're forgetting one thing. You still got to guard me on the other end. Yeah. So if True. I'm running to what I'm saying, he's going to be in foul trouble. So, he, you know, he's not going to be able to, you know, get that rhythm. And yeah, it, if he's hitting a lot of threes – I'm just going to get mad, and I'm just going to dominate more in the paint. So, In in order for the game to go back to where it was, it's going to have to be another Shaq or somebody dominant interior to be able to change that That's game. That's not going to happen because I got rid of all the blueprints. What about Joel Embiid? He looks like he's pretty dominant in on the interior right now. He's giving people now. the business. Now. There you go using those wrong words. What, 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 what? D. <laughs> the D word does not fit his game. So stop it. I'm I'm looking no, at no, no, the, no. you he, know he, what he 
GP, great player, but don't don't ever throw out that D word. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, because the most dominant is in the building. So let That's me parse right. my words during Black History Month. I ain't I trying no, to offend no nobody. <laughs> hey, Tracy. So, you know, I read all your accolades when I was introducing you. Uh, to me, um, I feel like that you were slighted um, not being named to the 75 top players of all time. What did you think when you found out? that you didn't make it were you surprised were you mad ever all no, of the I, above and no. tell truth because we tell truth here no, tracy no, no, no. I, I definitely wasn't mad i was shocked i was definitely shocked but well i was mad I mean, for you because that's bs all right well who made it that shouldn't have made it uh -oh. i think some of the older nah, older old time players if you're asking me i know yeah, you feel differently I, it, shaquille there's definitely i probably wouldn't have put there. them on some of the guys that's playing in today's game i i yeah. think they could have been on whatever the next list is going to be, what the top right. 100 or whatever. You know who I've always had a problem with? Bill Walton. I think a lot of people. Yeah, you say that all the time. Yeah, because why? He only got 6,000 points in there. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah really? I don't know and, what and that's about. And really, if you, if you were going to pick up. over uh, Bill sure Walton. Am. Yeah, but, but let's be fair here, Spice, for real. If you're going to pick Bill Walton and Tracy McGrady, it's Tracy McGrady eight days a week, all day, all, every, day all day, correct? Every day. I mean, that's, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, come on. Yeah, I think a no lot Come on. So no, I I was shocked. I wasn't upset. I mean, at the end of the day, being top seventy five will never trump being a Hall of Famer. So okay. that's how I saw it. Uh, okay, Hoffa, uh, Hoffa, <laughs> Hall of Famer. Go ahead, Shaq. Call him. Yeah, Call him. Baby boo, Hoffa. Boo. Okay, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> baby Hoffa. Man, what, what's that like, man? To call yourself a Hall of Famer, dude? Like I know, right? What, I mean, what is that like? You know what? For me, man, that is. Um, because I, I never played on a championship team, and obviously the goal was to win a championship. Um, that was my championship. You know, that was my mm -hmm. reward of you know the work that I put in, uh, countless hours. You know, two, three days of working. That was that was my championship. So speaking you know. of championship, MVP race. When I was coming up, I always thought the MVP was the baddest mofo, shut your mouth Man, in the, let me tell you in the game. No, but hold on, let me finish. Now it's, yeah, he's a bad player, but his team. So now people focus on teams. I always thought it was as a player, if you're the baddest guy in the league, you should be MVP. Now it's, oh, his team is in first, his team is in fourth. I don't so, like that. Yeah. I don't like that because that's, that's not a real MVP to me. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because you own a championship team and you're the best player on a championship team. Of course. Right, but when you look at a guy that um, I I'll say is putting up crazy numbers, doesn't really have the talent like some of these elite teams have. Like Westbrook he, did that year. Yeah, like Westbrook did that year, and he gets his team into the playoffs. Whether it's a seventh or eighth seed, he doesn't have that type of talent around him. That's an MVP to me because if you take him off of that, they don't make the playoffs. Right, and, right. and I had a year like that, my 2003 year. I mean, when I played for the Magic, of course, I'm. I'm not playing with no other all-stars. I get guys that's never made an all-star team, right? And I get my team, I think we got to the like the sixth seed, and I'm averaging 32 points, and I can't get that. You take me off of that team, we're a lottery pick. We're a lottery team, right? Who so won the MVP that year? I think Tim Duncan got it that year. Yeah. Tim Duncan got it that year. Mm -hmm. And, and the Spurs, you take you take him off of the Spurs, they still make the, the playoffs. Because they were that's that true. great. So what, whoa, that's whoa, true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They make the playoffs. No, yes, no, they they no, they do. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They're going to – you crazy. No, they don't. Why they don't? Because a lot of those guys got their success off of him. Bruh. Yeah, he got double. He kicking out the Ginobili. No. Right. They, they have a well-oiled machine. Yeah, Tim Duncan. No. With, I'm saying <laughs> without Tim Duncan, they still are no. a playoff team. No. They win game, but they don't, they don't make the playoffs. Big. Ginobili. And Tony Parker, you got, all -star, you got two All Stars on that team, bro. They live off of they live off of Mr. Duncan. So, so what? Double. So you hear him? So what you're yeah, saying? I'll, those, I'll say those, those, so, so those two guys ain't Hall of Famers, then? I, I, I'm not going on. I'm not going on to say that. But like, what's, what? What you mean? No, I'm saying if you take them off, you take Tim off the team, they don't have the same success. Hold on. Hold okay, on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's what I'm talking about. So T Tim Duncan, get him T Mac. Tim Duncan made Ginobili and Tony Parker. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Hell no. Yeah. Ooh, All day, well, every day. Not yeah. no, but who hell no, who, he said. Hell no. Bro, if, if, who carried them when Tim Duncan was older? 
What you mean? Tony Parker. Yeah, but hold on. But Tim was still out there making noise. Like when Tim got the ball, you still got to do this. Big. And Come you on. You do man. that sneakily as you know, was doing what he's done. Stop Tony. it, Tracy. Tony. We always argue like this. Like, you know, he used to come to my house and say, This is the best. Listen. No, we <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Ever since he's 18 years <laughs> old. <laughs> this is the best though because I literally I'm li- we're listening to two legends like break down the game and okay, I, I love it. I, I'll- okay, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're not great players. They are, but I'm just saying their game opened up because of Mister Mister Tim. Duncan. I'm not denying that, okay. but That's I'm saying, I'm saying those. I'm saying the talent that those them two by themselves could have made it without with the Tim. team that no, they have. Stop it. Stop it. Since y'all arguing. Should Demar Derozan be in the conversation for MVP? Absolutely. No. no stop it. He shouldn't? No, what? Man, stop it. For MVP? In the conversation, oh, oh, oh. yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm no. sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but conversation to me conversation to me means one or two, not five, six, seven, eight. He ain't one or two. Give me in a, the who, conversation. Who's, who's one or two? Embiid and Joker. Whoa. Really? I can't argue with that, but mm-hmm. damn. Embiid and Joker. Where, 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 where so, have Chicago mm-hmm. been for all these years? DeMar. Where have Chicago been all Back these DeMar, years, bro? DeMar DeRozan, I misunderstood the question. Yes, you should be in the conversation. Okay. I that's, that's all we yes. saying. That's all conversation, we say. yes. Uh, yeah. Um, let's talk about your new venture here because you, you, I love the idea of this. And and you're right because a lot of times basketball comes down to the one-on-one, right? Oh, yes. So you want to highlight the one-on-one. Can you tell our audience what you're talking about, this new venture that you're Yeah, doing? so I'm building a one-on-one league nationwide. And uh, it's called OBA One's Basketball League. And basically, it's the essence, it's a pure essence of basketball. You know, big, mm-hmm. I know you can attest to this. Um, Spice, you probably did this too if you got siblings and your cousins. You know, when, you know, when we were younger, used to get the clothes hanger. And and ball that thing up like yeah. a basket, like a basket, and put it at the top of the aluminum the door, foil, right? some socks, yeah, 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 or 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 a milk crate, hang yep. it up against the a tree, crate? play one on one, burn the hole at the bottom no of it, no doubt. Yeah, so we just bring in, you know the the true essence of basketball. I mean, there's one on one within team, like five on five. Like if you're a mm-hmm. rebounder for your team, you got to out rebound the guy that's across from you, right? That's your job. Box his ass out if you don't. Your coach is gonna be on your head. Like you gotta get that guy off the board. So we're just really highlighting that and taking what UFC is is really is. We're becoming UFC of basketball. Who were the UFC fighters before they got on that platform? Like I didn't know a lot of those guys. So there's a lot of guys out here. There's underground leagues, and we're gonna find these guys that you know still have true love for the game, tell great stories because whatever happened in their lifetime. You know, they had to pivot and went left, and um, they still have game. But to you guys, I'm telling you, there are guys out here that will bust in any NBA player ass in a game of one-on-one. Any of the elite players right now, I'm talking about the yeah. Kyrie Irvins, I'm talking about the KDs, James Harden. Mm-hmm. There are guys on these blocks that will bust they ass in the game of one-on-one, and, and I'm this, going to find those guys. And is this deal solidified yet? Yes. Good, we, we, we're starting in April. Because uh, I'm doing something similar, so you better join me or I'm taking over. I'm not worried about Ooh. that. Ooh. Okay. I heard that. Okay. That. I, <laughs> I got on my, what I got on my but team, see, I'm look, not scared of that. So, like, when I bring youngsters into my house, because, you know, T-Mac came to my house, he was a youngster. I like to test them out to test their toughness up. I could never punk T-Mac. Nah, I, like, I, about that. You could never I, I punk him. No, never. Ever, never, never, ever mm-hmm. punk him. Like, I'd say certain things, he just, you know, he just had the same – uh, crazy look he got on his face now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you need help with that. But yeah, but if you need help with that. Uh, nah, for real. Yeah. Like, it's it's a big deal, man. We, Do you have a shoe sponsor yet? I'm working on that. We need to talk. Because you know your boy, you know your boy just bought Reebok a couple months ago. Yeah. We need to um, talk. Okay, <laughs> I'm serious. All right, cool. I'm, I'm, got I'm it. serious. We need All to talk right, cool. about that. But, you, got, uh, you got to wear the shoe I'm, sack I'm wearing talking, right now. I'm, I'm talking to Showtime right now, so. I wear Tom's, baby. <laughs> You no, know why? Don't take them things off. Leave them things covered. Yeah, don't nobody want to nah, see please, that. I, I, no, nah, man. First I of all, don't ruin, don't ruin the show, bro. I got <laughs> half a feet. Camera two, where you at? Oh, nah, bro. Don't, oh, boy, oh, here's see. This show. Yeah, right here hey, on the table. Vice, why did you uh, have to do that? I know. I'm I, sorry. We all seen I'm them, sorry. bro. We, uh, we've all seen them. Just keep, keep on. Okay, <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> Welcome to the family, buddy. Now that you have gotten comfortable with everything that we do here on the big podcast. I'm going to know right now. 
You know what? I've always been fan. Fact, Shaq, Shaq has been my guy for years, man. I, I always uh, looked uh, up and respect Shaq. Like, that's my big brother. I don't have a big brother, but he's always been that dude. Michelle. Ah, I like to hear that. Yes, yes, Shaquille. Okay, so you know how, like, certain lady celebrities can add on to their lady parts? If I yeah. got my. If, relax, bro. Okay. If I got my toes <laughs> redone. Uh huh. Is that a good thing? Cut them I off. mean, they do have like bunion surgery. No, they got you can correct. That's why them. I ain't got no bunions. My toenails <laughs> just all messed up. I ain't got no bunions. <laughs> get, get it done, bro. One of my boys told me this. I was I was dying laughing. I, he said, uh, "Bro, you know what Zion Williamson might have to do, bro? What? He might have to get his body done." <laughs> What if my boy said that last night, bro? Oh, so he can't keep off the weight, bro. Oh, oh, oh. He might have to get a BBL. He might have to get a BBL surgery. What he said to me last night, bro? I'm going to die laughing. Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson. Zion, Zion, if your ass coming with a 10 inch waist and a guy 40 inch booty. Don't say nothing to me, dog. <laughs> Don't say nothing to me, dog. <laughs> Shout out to my brother Squatty in New York and Harlem, man. Zion, I didn't say that, bro. I am only the messenger, bro. I promise you I got a lot of love and respect for you. Get back hey. on the court, young fella, because we missed that. Gracie, you're going to stay with us, right? Please stick around. We got to go, man. I'm not going to switch This is wild today, man.